Now you may have noticed that in my programs I've named my constants, both those declared using const and those declared using hash define, all in capital letters. And I've separated any words, any parts of the constant name that can be divided into words using an underscore like this. Tax rate underscore defined, tax rate underscore const. Now let's have a look at some more naming conventions. You can find this example in 0, 4 underscore naming conventions. Now naming constants all in capital letters with individual words separated by underscores is a widely adopted convention in C. But bear in mind that it is only a convention and not a rule. When you write C code, you may want to adopt some other conventions. For example, you might want to put names of variables and functions in different mixes of upper and lower case letters than you'll find that I use. Now, these are some common naming conventions which are widely used by many C programmers. Use lowercase letters for variable names. Use lowercase letters for function names. And when those names are made up of more than one word if you spoke it in English, you might want to separate them by underscores. Many programmers also use lowercase letters for parameter names, that is, the items between parentheses that are passed to a function. And you may want to use again underscores, like this, or some people prefer to divide parts of the identifier by putting in capital letters, like this, in which case, of course, I would have to rename the references to that uh, argument in the rest of my code. Let me undo that to put it back as it was. Now, once again, let me emphasize that these are only conventions. You are not obliged to name your functions and variables in this way. And in fact, some programmers adopt other conventions. So, for example, I could, if I wanted, capitalize the name of a function as I've done here, though in fact my general preference is to use lowercase letters for function names. But whichever naming convention you choose, try to be consistent. Now an important point to remember is that C is a case-sensitive language. So a function, for example, called do underscore something, all in lowercase, is treated as a different function from this one, also called do underscore something, but with a mix of capital letters to divide the words. So I've got a capital D and a capital S. And when I call those functions in my code, the different functions are called here, this one calls this function, and here, this calls that function. And the same goes for variables. If you have variables that are named the same, if you say them out loud, but are written with a different mix of upper and lower case, then they will be treated as different variables. Another important point to bear in mind when you choose the names for your variables and functions is that it's useful to pick names that describe what they actually do. So look at this function, for example. I've called it myfunc. I've passed it an argument or a parameter called z. I've declared this variable called t, and then I've set t to the value of z plus v and returned t. Now, what the heck is that intended to do? Well, v up here is defined as 33. Still, it isn't clear as to what is going on here. But it's valid code. I can run it. And it produces the correct output. But it would be so much clearer if I actually wrote names for the variables and functions that meant something. This is the same function. It performs exactly the same task when the program is run. The C compiler treats it effectively as the same code. But from the point of view of the programmer, it is so much clearer because I've given the function a meaningful name that tells me what the function is intended to do. The parameter that I've passed to it tells me what value it is supposed to hold. The local variable here, again, tells me something about what it is intended to represent. And the expression here tells me that I've added the service charge, which is defined up here, onto the subtotal, 
I've assigned the result to the grand total and returned the grand total. So just by giving more meaningful names to the function and the variables and the constant, suddenly my code is so much clearer. And clarity is incredibly important when you're writing complicated programs.